Hi, my name is Brent Floyd. I'm an academic counselor and uh, faculty with the Honors College, and today I will be talking about redlining. Redlining begins after World War II, as hundreds of thousands of GIs return home looking to start families, but don't have a place to live. So the federal government, through the Federal Housing Administration, pours millions of dollars into home construction and the backing of mortgages issued by banks for these uh, service members. At the same time, they instituted the National Appraisal System. And what the National Appraisal System did is they went and they assessed communities and cities, 239 cities total, for what they called financial risk, and then gave them a color code. Um, and the banks used this, this assessment by the Federal Housing Administration to determine who they were going to give mortgages to. What ends up happening is you find that this is the beginning of the suburbanization of America. And the national appraisal system looked at these communities and the communities that were all white were given a color code of green and deemed a very low security, uh, security risk and a very low financial risk. Those communities that were predominantly uh, African-American or made up of minorities were given a color code of red, thus the, the term redlining, uh, and given a, a high security risk rating. And banks use this to determine where they were going to issue mortgages. So over time, what happens is you have a suburbanizing white America subsidized with federal tax dollars, um, and these white communities are, are accumulating wealth. They have purchased a home. They are building up equity. So later on down the road, when they want to send their kids to college, or if they want to start a small business, or if they run into a medical emergency, they can tap into the equity in their home in order to do that. The minority communities, the African-American communities that were predominantly left in the urban centers were left with either a rental market or later on public housing in which you do not build up equity. Um, and this has a huge impact on, on, on wealth accumulation. Essentially, the banks and the federal government and the federal housing administration subsidize the accumulation of wealth in white neighborhoods while divesting predominantly African-American and minority communities of wealth. And this has an impact on the quality of your schools. This has an impact on the quality of your health care. This, this determines whether or not you live next to a public park or a factory. And the shape and nature of you know, the economic reality for many Americans is still, uh, still felt through the policy of redlining.